As I've stressed in previous videos, the human brain is an incredible system. We can speak, think critically and dream. These skills are available to everyone, but some individuals are quite different. They perceive the world in a very unique way, different from the rest of us. We don't know what's happening inside their heads. Albert Einstein is the first to come to mind, for instance. He was dedicated to explaining concepts that test the limits of the mind, the laws governing the universe, time, space and matter. He was the father of theories, but when we shift our focus to inventions that have shaped our world and simplified human life, there's one name that would make all inventors you could think of seem a bit amateur, Nikola Tesla. In my opinion, among all inventors and scientists, Tesla holds a very special place. He was one of the most unique minds you could ever encounter. As a child, he could memorize an entire book line by line. He could flawlessly design a project or invention in his mind and didn't stop there, but took it upon himself to bring these mental inventions to life. When we say Tesla now, especially the younger generation might think of cars. Sadly, what the rest know about Tesla are mostly hearsay and more importantly, so superficial that we seem to fail to pay adequate tribute to this incredible intellect. So let's change that. Who is Nikola Tesla? How has he shaped the world we live in today? Let's take a look. But to paint this picture, let's start with his childhood where it all began. Tesla, of Serbian descent, was born in 1856 in a small village of the Austrian Empire, in what is now known as Croatia. There was a fierce storm at the time of Nikola Tesla's birth, lightning, thunderbolts. The midwife, who was superstitious, considered this a bad omen and predicted he would have a dark fate. His mother, on the other hand, said, no, my child will be a child of light. It's quite sad to see that both of them turned out to be right. We can see that he was going to be a very different child during his early years. In high school, he was able to perform integral calculations in his head. This was so unusual that his teachers thought he was cheating. Also, he had a photographic memory. He could remember any machine he saw in full detail. Not surprisingly, Tesla finishes high school much earlier than his peers. But at the age of 17, he falls seriously ill. He contracts cholera the plague of the age. He comes very close to losing his life during this period, spending nine months bedridden. While struggling with this dreadful disease, he sees this as an opportunity and says to his father, if you let me study engineering, I will survive. Because his father wants him to be a priest or a soldier. But seeing his son's condition, the father, perhaps considering it might be his last request, agrees. Interestingly, Tesla shows a miraculous recovery shortly afterwards and his father, keeping his word, allows him to study engineering at university. And thus, the course of history as we know it completely changes. By the way, after recovering, Tesla lives in the mountains in nature for a long time to avoid a mandatory three-year military service. Then Tesla, who started studying at the Graz University of Technology in Austria, always got the highest grades and could speak eight languages at the age of 21. He was the best student of the university. Allegedly, he spent a very long part of his day studying. And for this reason, one of his teachers sent a letter to his father saying, Tesla could lose his life if he continues studying this much. But towards the end of his second year, things start to go wrong. Tesla loses his scholarship due to a gambling addiction, and in his third year, he loses all his allowances and scholarships at the gaming table. At one point, he even manages to win more than he had lost, sending money back to his family. But sadly, his university life comes to an abrupt end due to his addiction. In his last year, he cuts off all contact with his family and friends to avoid telling them he dropped out. The situation is so sudden that his friends assume he's dead. Later, he moves to Maribor, Slovenia where he begins working for a local engineering firm. His father comes to visit and tries to convince him to return home, but Tesla refuses. Later, with help from his uncles, he moves to Prague and applies to the Charles Ferdinand University to continue his academic studies. However, he can't enroll because he doesn't speak Czech. Despite knowing he won't receive a degree, he attends classes at the university and spends all his remaining time in the Clementino Library in Prague. Tesla then finds a job at a telephone company and moves to Budapest. There he makes countless improvements to the telephone systems, contributing to their smooth operation. Then, through certain connections, he gets the opportunity to work at the Edison Continental Company in France. Yes, we could say this is where his first connection with Edison begins, although he hasn't met Thomas Edison yet. He starts working at the Paris branch of Edison's company, helping it expand into Europe. 
His actual role was as a technician, and his main job was to solve the issues the company was facing with direct current. Every day there were short circuits and explosions at different locations and Tesla would travel to these places to fix the issues. He found solutions so quickly that he grabbed everyone's attention, but his most crucial assignment was to coincide with the opening of a German train station in Strasbourg. At the station's inauguration, attended by then German Emperor William III, there was a massive explosion due to a short circuit, which almost cost the Emperor his life. Of course, Tesla was sent to fix the issue there. Naturally, he permanently solved the problem there. However, he started to believe that direct current was no longer viable and that a new solution was needed. He started advocating for investment in alternating current. So in 1885, he proposed to Thomas Edison that he could redesign his constantly malfunctioning, short-circuiting, exploding direct current motors and generators. Edison actually liked the idea and told him if he could fix the problem, he would pay him what would be worth a million dollars today. Tesla immediately got to work and soon found a solution that would prevent these motors from exploding or short-circuiting. To achieve this, he simplified the complicated designs and made them more reliable. The design was so good that it is still used today in everything from household appliances to water pumps, even in today's Tesla cars. When Tesla finished the job and asked Edison for his payment, Edison laughed and responded, Mr. Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. This was the first time Edison betrayed Tesla, who was left deeply disappointed but moved on with his life. While all of this was happening, the world was on the brink of a revolution. The electricity revolution was about to happen, and it was set to fundamentally change the world. Similar to the dot-com bubble of the 90s, there was a rush of investments. Suddenly, billion-dollar companies emerged, and the American economy experienced an incredible economic leap that would last until today. This was due to the contribution of electricity to production, home technologies, and overall productivity in working life. Life had become so simplified that it's hard for us to truly understand the revolution and transformation because we, our fathers and their fathers, were all born into electricity. Imagine a world without electricity, or if you're old enough like me, recall life without the internet. Try explaining to today's kids a time without the internet. No matter what you do, they won't truly comprehend what that was like. Well, Tesla, naturally fueled by ambition after being duped by Edison, had his sights set on powering this electric revolution with the safer alternative current. Yet, these times weren't going to be a walk in the park. His earnings dropped to two bucks a day as he started working on construction sites and digging roads. He referred to this period as one of the toughest phases of his life. Eventually, Tesla's project succeeded in piquing the interest of one individual, George Westinghouse, a fierce rival of Edison. Westinghouse was the founder of the Westinghouse Company and was a key player in what we today call the current wars, one of history's grandest battles for power. Caught in the crossfire of this bitter feud over money, patents and power between Edison and Westinghouse was our hero Nikola Tesla, a man whose head was filled with nothing but inventions and who ate, slept and breathed his creations. It's worth noting here that during this time Edison established General Electric Company if we view the battle between Tesla and Edison in a broader context, what we'll actually see is a patent war between Westinghouse and General Electric. Regardless, backed by Westinghouse's support, Tesla began working on solutions against Edison's unreliable direct current technology. One of the biggest issues with direct current was its inability to carry electricity over long distances. It required power stations to be built every few kilometers. Also, it required the use of very thick cables. If you consider today's world, it was far from suitable for providing electricity to all homes worldwide. On the other hand, Tesla's alternative current system used very thin cables and could carry much more voltage Electricity could be transmitted over vast distances without any issues. Thus, the battle began and the winner would light up the entire world. In 1893, Edison and the army of American lawyers behind him filed numerous patent lawsuits against Westinghouse and Tesla's inventions and ideas. Along with this lawsuit process, the aforementioned war was reaching its peak because even Edison knew that Tesla's system was far superior. However, he couldn't stand the thought of the public knowing this. Therefore, he had to prove that carrying such high voltage by the alternative current was a terrible thing. But how? 
Here, let's mention a peculiar incident. People living in the area where Edison's laboratory was located started experiencing strange events. Their pets, cats, dogs, one by one, were disappearing. Of course, this was not the work of aliens. Edison was paying children 25 cents for every animal they could catch and bring to him. And Edison was killing these animals publicly by electrocuting them. And for this, he was using Tesla's alternative current. He was trying to show that using this current in homes was very dangerous. Edison went even further and financially supported the production of the electric chair. Of course, to emphasize just how devilish a thing it was to be used as a method of execution, he used Tesla's alternative current. From these two examples, we can easily understand how ambitious he was. But Tesla wasn't standing still either. In 1893, at a fair, he demonstrated the safety of his alternating current by passing it through his own body to produce light. That was essentially checkmate for Edison. This move ushered in the widespread adoption of Westinghouse's AC generators and systems worldwide, further boosted by their technical superiority. And for Nikola Tesla, this was the beginning of the best period of his life. He had become a global celebrity, everyone knew his name, and he began to be mentioned alongside the most influential people of his time. The world looked upon him as a hero for easing their lives. They loved him. In a country he arrived in with just four cents in his pocket, Tesla had risen to the top thanks to his intelligence and perseverance. During this period, he received patents for 25 of the most important inventions since the invention of the telephone, including AC motors, generators, transformers, and power transmission technologies. These inventions are so important that they underpin all the electric devices we use in our homes today. Uh, but even all that would have been enough to make Tesla a legend. He did not stop there. Uh, the inventions he came up with in the following years would lay the foundation for all the advancements of the 20th century. For instance, many believe that Marconi is the inventor of the radio. However, all of Marconi's work was based on Tesla's research. In 1893, Tesla had theorized that information could be transmitted via radio waves, and in 1898, he had remotely controlled a boat in front of a crowd. This was such an extraordinary feat at the time that people thought Tesla was performing magic, or that there was a small monkey inside the boat. But when Marconi sent the first transatlantic radio message, he claimed the title and became world famous. Tesla once said about Marconi, Marconi is using 17 of my patents, but he is a good man, let him continue. Now let's come to another significant discovery. X-rays, isn't it weird? We all think that the inventor of X-rays is Wilhelm Röntgen, but here's the catch. The first person to capture an X-ray image was actually Nikola Tesla himself. Here, things are a bit different. Röntgen and Tesla were conducting the same research independently and at the same time. In different tube-based experiments, Tesla manages to capture the first X-ray image before Röntgen announces his discovery of what he called X-radiation. However, there were many irregularities in Tesla's image, and he believed he hadn't arrived at the final result yet. A few weeks later, Röntgen announces his discovery to the world, and Edison, in his pursuit to test and perhaps patent this discovery, uses these rays, the X-rays, on one of his employees named Charles Daly. After being exposed to such harmful radiation, Daly first loses his arms and later dies of cancer. Edison, on the other hand, risks losing his eyesight. Now it's time to talk about one of the dark events that affected Tesla's entire life. In March 1895, a fire broke out in the building where Tesla's laboratory was located. All of Tesla's work to date, including designs in progress, models, all notes, everything was consumed by the fire. Absolutely everything. And his $50,000 worth of materials was all gone. When a reporter from the New York Times later asked him how he felt, he said, Terrible. I feel awful. I'm at a loss for words. Anyway, on to another of his substantial innovations, hydroelectric power plants. Nikola Tesla was the one to design the first hydroelectric power plant. He proposed that an entire city's electricity needs could be met with a plant at the Niagara Falls. Of course, no one believed him, but he had already conceptualized and designed it since his childhood. He had thought about how to extract energy from moving water from a very young age. Eventually, with the plant built at Niagara Falls, New York was powered. The city received electricity from water, all thanks to the alternating current. Another intriguing invention of his was the earthquake machine. 
The earthquake machine has a fascinating story. While working on a vibration machine in his lab, Tesla noticed that when he synced the machine's vibration with the building's natural frequency, the building itself started to sway. He gradually increased the power until the building started to creak. Heavy machinery in the lab began to sway back and forth. It wasn't until the plaster began to fall off that he was forced to break the machine with a hammer to stop it. Screams were heard from the building. Everyone thought an earthquake had struck. Even the police arrived at the scene a few minutes later. Interestingly, the machine that nearly destroyed the building was almost as small as a tablet. Tesla pointed out that any force synchronized with natural frequency could be incredibly dangerous. Even a group of soldiers marching over a bridge could cause it to collapse if their steps synchronized with the bridge's vibrations. Now, let's move on to his most ambitious project, one that even today would stretch the limits of imagination. Had it succeeded, it could have made the world a vastly different place. The Tesla Tower, also known as the Wardenclyffe Tower. This story is quite something. The Tesla Tower fundamentally aimed to transmit electricity wirelessly to the entire world. Using the Earth's ionosphere, Tesla intended to transmit power, wireless electricity, to everyone and everywhere. Scientists are still working on realizing this project today. The sad part of the story is this. Tesla was sincerely on the verge of making this project a reality. The initial tests were even successful. However, there were a few issues. The financier of the project was JP Morgan, and initially Tesla had only claimed it would transmit information over long distances. But remember Marconi. After he successfully transmitted a transatlantic message, Morgan decided there was no need for the tower and withdrew all financial support for the project. Furthermore, Tesla's project, way ahead of its time, seemed outrageous to many, and most importantly, it wasn't seen as commercially viable. This frightened the investors, and they began to withdraw their support one by one. Now, in 1905, when the patents of many of Tesla's inventions, including the alternating current motor, expired, his royalty income stopped, and the construction of the tower, which had made considerable progress, came to a halt. Despite Tesla's various efforts, it couldn't be completed. Another reason for the failure to complete the project was, as mentioned, Tesla's psychological collapse following the loss of all his notes, documents and work due to the fire. He was never really able to recover. Had this project been completed successfully, it would have paved the way for some of Tesla's lesser known wild projects. One of these was Tesla's death ray or particle beam. But amidst misfortunes, impossibilities and miscalculations, Tesla, perhaps because he was too far ahead of his time, experienced failure for the first time and it had come at a high cost. This unfinished project, the burning of his laboratory and the failures that were added on top of the unfinished projects. At this point, it's necessary to touch upon Tesla's character and mental state. Tesla was a man genuinely dedicated to humanity. His sole purpose was to improve human life, to enhance and boost the quality of life. Money had no significance for him. In an interview, he once said, Money may mean a lot to everyone else, but for me it holds no value. I spent all the money I made on new inventions and discoveries. While working on wireless energy and information transfer, Tesla was in fact laying the groundwork for what we now know as wireless internet. In one of his projects, he had envisioned a handheld device that would collect data from this wireless communication network. This was actually a design closest to what we know today as mobile phones, something he was contemplating in 1901. On the other hand, we can say that Tesla's mental health was deteriorating. According to many sources, he had an obsessive personality and likely suffered from insomnia. His friends claimed that he slept no more than two hours. He spent the rest of his time solving problems and working on his projects. We know he had a strange fixation with the number three and used precisely 18 napkins to wipe his dining table before starting to eat. He had a bizarre aversion to round objects, jewelry, handshaking and touching hair. We can see the peculiar behaviors behind the brilliant minds in Tesla as well. Consequently, he could not cope well with his failures. Starting with the Tesla tower, he had entered a path 
path of inevitable failure. He had ascended from zero to the pinnacle of success, and with the same speed, he hit rock bottom. But this was painful, and during this process, he had lost his mental health to a clinical level, to the point where he could not differentiate reality from the world of fantasy. In an interview, he said, I have been feeding thousands of pigeons for years, but one of them was different. We had a unique connection. You could even call it love. Every time, she would find me among thousands of pigeons. One night, while I was working on problems, she came by my side as if she was going to tell me something important. She was telling me she was going to die. I understood that. I looked into her eyes and saw lights coming out. This tells us about the mental state Tesla was in. Throughout his life, Tesla signed off on a hundred patented inventions and a total of 700 different inventions. However, he spent the final period of his life in room 3,327 of a hotel named the New Yorker, too poor to even afford the rent. Why did this happen, you may ask? The answer is simple. During the fight with Edison, the Westinghouse company had fallen into deep trouble. They proposed not to give Tesla any shares until this problem was resolved. Tesla agreed and at that moment tore up all his contracts. The deal we're talking about would be worth nearly $300 billion today. Westinghouse had opened its doors to him and believed in him when everyone else turned their backs. Maybe that was enough for Nikola Tesla. His attitude toward money can also be seen from this. Maybe he saw that he had changed the world and that was enough for him. Nikola Tesla's ideas and inventions laid the groundwork for many developments in the 20th century and contributed significantly to America's power. Let's give credit to Edison too, without completely undermining him. Especially concerning the invention of the bulb, he is somewhat underestimated. To draw a comparison, Thomas Edison directed all the work correctly, like what Steve Jobs did for the iPhone today, and facilitated the invention of the bulb. Also, as a final note, let's not forget to mention the names of the scientists before Tesla. Tesla stabilized alternating current, but before him, Michael Faraday theoretically and Hippolyte Pixie practically had done significant work on this subject. Every invention we witness, even if credited to a single name, is indeed a collective success of hundreds, thousands of people's work. Mark Twain said on this matter, thousands of people produce a telegraph, a steam engine, a phonograph, a photograph, a telephone, or any other significant thing, but usually the last person takes all the credit and we forget all the people behind it. All they do is place the final piece. 99% of all the developments we see are inspired, we could say borrowed. Considering this, we need to learn to be more humble, but we just can't. In summary, Nikola Tesla was a very significant figure. Many people made billions of dollars and achieved immense fame using his name. However, when you remember him, I ask you to remember him with what I've told in this video. I relied on numerous sources while preparing this video and had to grapple with a lot of misinformation, but I tried to explain it in the most objective and realistic way. It was a lengthy but very enjoyable experience for me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. As always, I'm glad you're here. Best wishes 